For years, economists have defined the economic health of a country by its gross domestic product. Trouble is, every time a forest falls, the GDP goes up. With every oil spill, the GDP goes up. Every time a cancer patient is diagnosed, the GDP goes up. Is this how we measure economic progress? Economists must learn to subtract. That video was produced a few years ago by Adbusters, the Vancouver-based anti-consumerist magazine that helped inspire the Occupy movement. It marked the beginning of a campaign that culminated in the just-published book, Meme Wars, the Creative Destruction of Neoclassical Economics. Callie Lassen is the founder of Adbusters and, of course, the author of the book. Great to have you with us. Yes, hello. So yeah, let's I should point out that, uh, that, uh, that I've been fighting a 20-year legal battle for the right to air spots like that, advocacy spots like that on CBC and private stations in Canada. Okay, and, uh, and why can't you wear them? What's the root of that battle? Well, they say that these are advocacy spots and they have different rules compared to product spots and they just don't like this sort of stuff spoiling their fun. Okay, well, let's talk, Kelly, about where things stand. Uh, obviously, uh, that and other very provocative kind of things that you produce, including your book, really get at this notion that we're not being well served by the system as it stands. That helps spark Occupy. What would you like to see happen? What is the sort of solution that Occupy wasn't really offering up? Can you offer us one? Well, yes, I think that uh, the sort of stuff that we've been trying up to now, you know, stimulus and austerity and talking about Robin Hood taxes and, and changing regulations and stuff like that, I don't think that stuff is really working. I think the global economy is still tanking. And, and what we really need, I believe, is a shift in the theoretical foundations of economic science itself. Um, it became quite obvious uh, uh, back in 2008 when the, when the financial meltdown happened that, uh, that, that not even one in a hundred, not even one in a thousand, I think, of uh, mainstream economists, uh, all those people at the World Bank and the IMF and even the Nobel Prize winners, uh, all those professors of economics at uh, universities all around the world and all the, all the policy makers to governments all around the world, not even one in a thousand of those people uh, saw this catastrophe coming. And that was a kind of a emperor has no clothes kind of a moment when the world woke up to the fact that mainstream economists these people that i call neoclassical economists they don't they're totally out to lunch they don't know what they're talking about yeah, and me, if we let me ask you a question let me ask you a question you are essentially a publisher and i'm going I'm, let's let's be agnostic to the. i'm a your, campaigner not a publisher okay, a campaign publisher let's be agnostic to your content i'm going to make the assumption that there's merit in what you're saying how do you stay in business are you profiting from what you're doing? Are you taking a margin? Are you paying people to do this? Are you not yourself a small economy that has to stay alive? Yes, there's, uh, 10, 000, there's 10, 10 of us full-time people at Adbusters, and they all get a salary. Uh, we also have a 100,000 large culture jammers network all around the world who feed into our magazine. And 95% of the money that we get, it comes through the sale of Adbusters magazine. So let's talk about the solutions here. Occupy went away for winter. What's your advice to the Occupy movement if what they'd like to do is really get these issues front and center and make some change? Well, you know, the, there's this uh, sort of misconception that somehow the Occupy movement has hit the skids and it's gone away somehow. But, uh, uh, you know, the, this uh, sleeping in Zuccotti Park model of Occupy, sh surely that's disappeared. But, you know, the spirit of Occupy is still alive all over the world. The core impulse yeah. behind the Occupy movement was this feeling in the guts of hundreds of millions of young people around the world that the future does not compute. Uh, and that if they want to have any kind of a future at all, they will have to stand up and fight for a different kind of a future. And they're doing that. They're doing that in, in Russia with the pussy rioters. They're doing it in Spain with the indignados. There's anarchists strutting their stuff in Greece. There's a media reform movement happening in, in, uh, in Mexico. Uh, teenagers are dashing off into the streets in Chile and fighting for education reform. Uh, and and uh, so the, this, uh, this young people all around the world are actually sort of aiming towards some kind of a global spring, which would be way bigger than anything that Occupy if, was. If that's true, why can't we have a harness on this force if it really has a focus 
Why get a leader. A get a Why leader. Need a harness? But you know, I don't care what you want to call it. But if it's going to actually have any effect long term, besides sitting in a park and freezing, it needs a leadership. It needs a political movement. It Not needs to get all. elected. I don't agree with that at all. The first phase. I mean, of you don't Occupy, want to see these people elected. You just want first, to see them sitting in the parks. The first phase of Occupy was magical. It, it got thousands of it and people all over the world together, rubbing shoulders, getting politicized, and talking to their leaders and telling them that they want fundamental, deep down, systemic change. And in that sense, it was a wonderful, magical moment for the whole world, and I think it's going to continue to grow. The fact that it didn't have leaders and, and, and we didn't play within this uh, capitalist process that you love so much, uh, that doesn't mean anything. You know, what we're trying to do is, is work outside this current economic paradigm that we're caught in. But are, are, we don't have a ton of time, but are you satisfied that that will actually yield real results? Clearly it tapped, as you say, a global vein of anger, but in order to actually leverage that into something that forces policy change, you need some, some clout you, and maybe you need people inside the system. Well, you know, that's the traditional view. I mean, uh, you guys like to think that everything has to happen within your system, the system that you've created. But a lot of young people today, they're waking up to the fact that there's something fundamentally, systemically wrong. You know, while you guys are talking there every night uh, on your program about money, money, money ad nauseum, you know, the, the sea levels are rising and, and uh, there are, the fish are disappearing from the oceans and the permafrost in the Arctic is starting to, to bubble methane and ecosystems are collapsing all over the world and climate change tipping points are hovering on the horizon and you guys keep on wanting to talk about money and corporate takeovers and stock exchanges. But we in the Occupy movement, we have much bigger plans. All uh, right. On, on this we, planet? We've got to leave, uh, leave it there, Kelly. Great to have you with us. We appreciate your time okay. today. Kelly yeah, Lassen, founder of Adbusters, author of the book Meme Wars, The Creative Destruction of Neoclassical Economics. It is